Hi, I'm going to describe how what I'm going to do. I mean, what I did for calculating F of T on the nuclear board. So what I have here is, so what's going on is I set a timer three to generate 10 kilohertz events. So if you see that here is just say the trigger is, is uh, on, uh, the clock speed of the timer is 240 hertz, megahertz. And then the prescale is 240 and then uh, so it, it, with this setup it generates, I hope it generates 10 kilohertz events. And then this event is forwarded to ADC, ADC1, which the input is like in three sing single ended. Uh, so if you see the, e the uh, start of a conversion is being triggered by timer three trigger out event. Uh, so the other options of the other settings of ADC is like 16 bit resolution and also at the end of each conversion DMA is being triggered. Um, yeah, and then uh, it DMA is copying the signal to a buffer. So what's happening here uh, through the code. Um, so let me show you the code, the main function. Uh, so I have a bunch of uh, buffers so this ADC buffer length I set it to 496 4096 conversion so I need uh, this is the buffer that being filled by DMA and then this is the uh, fast Fourier conversion fast Fourier transformation uh, input buffer which is being copied from here to here and also transfer from the 16-bit value to a f uh, floating number uh, with the unit of voltage um, and then this is like the output of the fast Fourier transformation and then I have another buffer for calculating the frequencies uh, the value for each frequency because FFT output is going to be the same length but in it uh, it's a kind of a complex number so you have we have to calculate the absolute value of these complex numbers so what's happening here in the main is actually this the thing is very cool it generates a lot of codes and you don't need to dig into the registers and f how to set up modules it's very cool now uh, so what I just added is just like initialize the FFT uh, handler and then also I you need to do a calibration for the ADC um, and just start the ADC with the DMA and then start the timer to trigger the ADC uh, conversions and just in the CPU code I just have this is data ready for FFT if it's stage 1 that means half of the ADC buffer is full so I just copy the first half of the ADC buffer to the uh, FFT input buffer uh, so I'm just ca converting it from this value to a, to a voltage and also um, I don't know if I'm doing correct here I'm just removing the uh, offset uh, and then so the FFT in is in float 32 uh, and when when this is 2 that means the half the second half is also ready so I just copy the second half from the ADC buffer to the uh, FFT buffer and then calculate FFT uh, and then calculate FFT just like calling the FFT from the CMS CMSIS library uh, and then as I said it's going to be a complex number so uh, we need the absolute values so th this one is the freaks uh, array is just half of the length of the FFT output uh, and we are going to plot this later in just in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, just just that's it for for this code. Um, yeah, so let me show you what I have here. The rest, let me remove this eclipse. So what I have here on on this left side is just my oscilloscope connected to the sensor, uh, and then here on the bottom is the. Uh, uh, fast Fourier transform result uh, on my computer with just this like STM32 STM cube monitor it's pretty cool but the problem is that they are not working very well for arrays 
Um, so what I have here is the buffers and I just could plot few of the frequencies, uh, not all of them, not all the 2000 values because it's going to be too slow. Um, so what I have is just this result is a bit different from what I have in the oscilloscope and I don't know why. Okay, let me show you for example, I'm, I'm going to create a noise of 244 hertz. Why 200? 44 hertz so for example uh, if you want to map this frequency for example the index 30 what frequency it represent is like uh, for example frequency 200 index 200 what frequency it is um, so I just need to do this calculation I think so my sampling frequency is 10 kilohertz the length of the signal that I'm taking a FFT on it is just 4096 and then the frequency for the in for the 200th elements of the uh, frequency vector it's going to be 488 uh, hertz so if i just say here 480 hertz and i'm going to so here you are seeing my webcam so this is the sensor i'm just putting it on my monitor as a speaker and if i create that noise uh, we would definitely see it on the oscilloscope and we, we are seeing something on our calculation on the, on the 200th elements of this array of frequencies uh, it's going to um, increase relative to the others so uh, if you want you may mute now because it's going to create a lot of noise <laughs> So if you see, it's it's pretty close, 488 hertz, and we we could see that the, this orange one was quite higher than others. Let's see it again. Um. But the difference I want to see, like this oscilloscope, is not that much clear here I don't know why uh, or maybe this is totally okay uh, so let's try and maybe another frequency like the half of it so we were on 200 so we should see on the hundred one so let me show you <coughs> hundred one hundred elements gonna be 244 Hertz uh, I'm not going to talk during the noise because it's not going to record well. Yeah, if you saw that the blue blue column was not uh, so the blue and orange they had they were pretty close for the two uh, for the two hundred forty four hertz. I don't know why. So let's try maybe check the fourth 40th element so it's going to be 95 9765 9765 so we are expecting the fourth 40th element this one goes high mm. let me increase the volume mm. so it's pretty higher also pretty close here um, but the difference here it's a lot seems to me it's a lot higher than the difference I see in this graph I don't know why this is my oscilloscope connected to the sensor this is the output of uh, the output of ADC on the nuclear board. So if you have any hints what I'm doing wrong, please let me know. Um, I think that's it for now. Thanks.